Hello SG Beers, I'm Companion Wolf aka Rob Wolf on Facebook. Welcome to another tutorial in the Smile Game Builder tutorial series. In this tutorial I'd like to do something a little different. Instead of focusing on one topic and going with it, I'm going to dedicate this one to some tips and tricks, small things you can do to enhance or build your game. This might be one of the one of many on the subject where there might be routines that don't really fit into a larger tutorial. Sometimes I'll answer some of the frequently asked questions or I'll revisit old tutorials and improve upon them. You might already have figured out some of these gems but I'm including them anyway and some of these will depend on whatever updates Smileboom implements and they do so quite regularly. Again, I've pre-created the events and we'll skim through them for the tutorial. You can then refer to this video for step-by-steps as you need to. So the first thing on the agenda is event contact. There has been a bit of a confusion over this, including for myself, but it seems they've change the wording slightly in the tooltip or will if you don't have the same as me. The two event triggers I'm on about are when making contact with a player and when making contact with event. Make contact with player means when the player collides with the event and make contact with event is when the event collides with the player. I'd assumed the same thing as many others in the beginning, expecting the make contact with event to trigger something when one event collides with another, but this doesn't seem to be the case. Hopefully this should clarify things a bit. Um, a number of people have mentioned having the ability to strafe, i.e. move left and right without having to consistently move to navigate through maps like so. Um, if you hold down shift and then the direction key you can actually strafe left and right like so. I don't have a controller hooked up so I don't know if this feature is available for that yet but I would assume it's not however no doubt something will be done in the future. For our next one, say you open a dresser and want to view an image and then cancel it with a key press. This is one way to do it. So you'd create a dresser event as normal from the searchables um, presets. Or you just place the object itself and double click its options. It doesn't matter which one you choose because we'll be deleting most of the event commands anyway. And I've already preset this. So on sheet one, the local event switch is off. As I've mentioned in previous videos, this isn't necessary. I've just found it useful for keeping track and for consistency. So in the event details, play the sound effects. In this case, it would be chest, but you can use whatever you want, I guess. Then we would change the event graphic to open. And then we'd wait 0.7 seconds, display the image that you want. In this case, I've just chosen the logo, but of course you can use any image you want. Um, and then we disable the menu which is battle store and then it would be allow disallow menu um, and this is the same with display disable the player control it's in the same place at the top and then we add a local switch on the second event sheet the local condition would be on and the trigger 
would be automatic start for synchronize. We would assign a variable to the key input under advanced variable box. Um, then we'd create a conditional branch with the variable box check. Um, setting the assigned variable to 2, which if you remember, if you've been following my tutorials, is for when the key is pressed. And then under the yes, we would delete the image, wait for half a second, re-enable the menu screen and player control, change the event graphics to close and turn the local switch back off so that it can recycle the whole thing and you wouldn't really put anything in no unless you were going to have additional key presses so let's play test this and then you cancel with the key And you can do the same thing with, say, pictures or maps on the wall. Unfortunately, you can't do the same with an item from your inventory yet. So if you have a map item, you won't be able to use it to display the map image. You'll just have to place it on the wall and use this method to read it. For the next snippet, we'll create a warp gate where you'll pre be presented with a choice of where to teleport to just as I did in the previous tutorial, number 11, relationship system. It's very straightforward, very easy and definitely logical, but I thought I'd include it anyway. Besides, this may be a precursor for a more advanced warp gate tutorial where you can choose to teleport to previously visited locations. I'll cover that probably sometime in the future. Place the warp gate object, which is under outdoor, uh, like so and you'll, you'll double click it or edit it will you we use the top one link to another place I've already preset these up Do the same so We'll keep the sound effect or change it if you want one at all. Display text teleport to. Um, add a variable box check with the options set in this case desert town and temple. Under each of the options, we'd copy and paste the original darken screen for about half a second. And we change the player location to wherever you want to start on the corresponding maps. And at the very end, just rebrighten the screen up again. Or we could just completely leave these transitions out for insta travel so when this is play tested as you may have seen in the previous tutorial it will give that choice and then teleport to its space to its specified map. Like so. For the next one, the specified player, presumably the party leader, will only be able to access a certain area at a certain level. For this we have travelled to the the desert town. We create a blank event with two sheets. On the first sheet, make contact with the player as the trigger. Assign a, 
Okay, I've used number three hours. Well, that's okay. Anyway, we'd assign a variable to the selected characters level, which is in the advanced operating box under character information, and then you will have level. And then under yes, um, <coughs> we'd add a variable box check where the, if the variable is greater than three, so the player can't access the area until they're level three. And then under that, turn a local switch on and under no, display the text simply you can't access this area from you can only access this area from level 3 on sheet 2 the condition is local switch on but the sheet is blank and we have the collide with player unchecked so when we play test this That's the area. You can only access er this area from level three. However, if we use the debug window, the F5 and change his level to three, hit apply. We'll be able to go through no problem. You could also use this for a, a warning sign if the player is entering an area where the monsters are much tougher than his current level allows. I mean, there's no point in going into an area full of level 10 monsters and you're only level 1, right? You're guaranteed to get your ass seriously whooped. I guess that would be the fun of exploring, but sometimes you do need to be kind to your players. That ends this tutorial. In the next one, I'll focus on a very useful function scheduled for the next update, if all goes well, the details of which I can't reveal yet. And with that said, if you found this video useful, give it a like, and as always, subscribe for more tutorials, and visit my Twitter, Facebook, and the RPG Maker Times blog, and all of the links are in the description below. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.